I did them because I thought they were due last night, so I was like, oh my God. Probably I will change it to 11.59 or 58. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I expect all of you to, you know, finish your homework before even spring break. I expect you. <laughs> what is spring break for? <laughs> Imagine I will check that and I will give extra credit to those who finished already yeah. before break. Imagine. Maybe I should have. Okay, any questions? What are we doing today? We are going to start chapter 8. 8? Yes. Chapter 8 talks about sample population. And whatever we explained so far, it kind of makes sense more now. How we even collect the data we were talking about so far. How we collect all these numbers. Okay, so I will start with a quest, uh, with a kind of example. So let's say I am going to find the relation between a student's GPA and um, their field of study, or some other thing, their age, anything like that. So I need some information, okay? Mm -hmm. And then who's are, who are my subject, the students, okay? How many students, and what is the total number of students that I'm going to, you know, collect their data? All of these are important. So, um, who are exactly, you know, the the, I mean, the main uh, purpose of this study. So if I talk about, for example, University of, uh, Uni University of New Mexico Gallup, so I will have uh, maybe, let's say, 1,000 students, 2,000 students, and uh, I want to see how is the relation between a student's GPA and their age, okay? 
So I, do you think I'm able to collect 1,000 information from each single, I mean, collect information of 1,000 students? So in reality, it will be so difficult, right? To get information of each of these students. Um, let's say we are just talking about their age and their field of study, but there are many, many other informations, okay? Their GPA also. There are many other information. So imagine each student will have, for example, five, six, seven, maybe 10 characteristics, and then we have 1,000 of them, and then this many information, how we can collect them, how we can enter this uh, information in computer, definitely in middle of, you know, uh, entering process, we will have mistakes, and all of these are problems that we should always be careful and take care of. So how we take care of this? So if I consider uh, the whole, this University of New Mexico Gallup as a population and say all these student entire, let's say, I don't know the number, 1,000, 2,000 students are my <coughs> population, and my aim is to answer some of my question and find the relation, if I choose part of this population, part of these students, like let's say 100 of them, 50 of them, 200 of them, still it should be reasonable. The number that I'm talking about should be reasonable and proportional to this huge number, 1,000, 2,000 students. So if I choose part of this uh, campus, some of these students, if I find the relation between their age and their GPA, I can use this information and make an assumption and make a conclusion about whole entire this campus, all the students in campus. Later we will see how these are connected and how if we take part of just this, you know, uh, huge population and still we can make a conclusion. There are lots of theorems, they explain how these are connected. So. There are two definitions now we should know. One is population, another is the smaller part of population that we are going to call that sample. So what is population? Definition of population is this. Entire group of individuals that we are interested to you know, know about them. This is a population. So like entire, um, the students of, you know, group of students in University of New Mexico Gallup campus will be, the, will be my population because I'm interested to know their information and how I can, you know, connect their information. So population is the group of, entire group of individual that we are interested to find their information. And then sample is the smaller, Part, the smaller part of this huge population. So sample is the part of this population. So uh, in this book, in this class, we are never going to um, talk about population uh, using number. Like if I want to say, uh, what is my population in the study of finding GPA and age? I'm not going to say population is 2,000 students in University of New Mexico Gallup campus. I will just say entire group of students in Gallup campus. So instead of uh, using any number, I will just entire group of students. So from now on, whenever I'm asking you a question about what is the population, you should just say entire group of individuals. So the first aim is to find the individual who are the individuals of the study and then you will say entire group of individuals. So sample can have a number, can be a part of this entire group of individuals. We can say 100 students, 150 students, 200 students, okay? So for sample, we can you know, use number, but for population, no, we cannot use number. Okay, so the definition here says the population is a statistical, uh, in a statistical study is the entire group of individuals about which we want the information. A sample is part of the population from which we actually collect the information. We use a sample to draw a conclusion about the entire population. So 
the aim of choosing sample is to make a conclusion about a bigger or entire group of individuals. So now how we can collect this sample is so important. We cannot just say, okay, I have 100 students as a sample, so let's choose this class, another class there, another class there. So we choose 100 students from this, just this area, and then we are done collect their data. We cannot say that. We should have a good, you know, um, tool to collect these individuals, this, this sample. And uh, now I will tell you what is the best way of collecting sample. Then we will go through everything and we will know how to exactly collect them. The best way of collecting this part of population is choosing the individual randomly. So if I say I want this class, that class, the other class, it's not randomly, okay? So I'm favoring just maybe this, just this building in this university, okay? Or I'm just favoring a statistical student. But I, but I should have a good, you know, um, kind of way of collecting this data. And the good way is choosing randomly. So now there are different ways of choosing random sample. And we will talk about them. First, we will talk about those samples which are not reasonable and they are not random and they are not giving us a correct result. The first sample which is not giving us a good result is convenience sample. So convenience sample is that kind of sample which is not giving us a good result because it's not random. So why? Because in convenience sample, we are favoring a specific part of population. Like the way I say, I'm favoring just this class, that class, this part of, you know, building. This, is, this means favoring, okay? So if you favor a certain part of population, this kind of samples are not good. Convenience sample is such a sample. And mostly it says the person who is collecting data is kind of lazy, like he or she wants to do the easiest way, collect the data easiest way. Like if, for example, I want to collect sample, I say, okay, I have four, five classes, and out of these five classes, I just choose morning classes, you know, and I just collect their data. So this, I will choose the easiest way for myself or the most convenient way for myself to collect data. And if I do that, the sample will be convenient. Or there are different examples. For example, um, if a student is um, kind of as a, uh, what you call that, as a person who is collecting data, uh, wants to know what is the relation between a student's uh, um, amount of homework and their field of study, okay? So he or she has this kind of questionnaires and most of, the, I think you already saw such a thing. People go to you and ask you question and they say, do you have time to, you know, uh, answer some questions. So these are kind of way of collecting sample. So now I will explain how this kind of sample can be bad. For example, a student wants to know what is the relation between a student's homework and their field of study. So he or she will go to, for example, a cafeteria or some part of a specific part of, you know, this campus and just sit down there all the day and find some student and ask some student some certain questions. So what is your field of study? What is your, you know, amount of homework? And all of these kind of questions. And then, um, so what is bad about this? Because let's say uh, there are just, a specific department about around the cafeteria like in main campus you see, you see that uh, sub students union or the place you know uh, everyone kind of hang out and eat is close to just some specific departments okay so they they are not close to like a medical school or you know other uh, departments 
they are just around some specific uh, this kind of cafeterias are just in a specific location so who are going there some specific student from for example math department from like psychology department just certain department right mm -hmm. so this person who is collecting data is just collecting data from certain students from certain department so what about different field of study what about medical school what other really maybe difficult you know amount of homework okay right? so the person who is just going to sit somewhere in cafeteria and ask question he's just going to deal with some specific certain kind of students from certain department so he's not going to choose randomly because uh, he's just missing he's uh, missing some other department which is further uh, or you know far from cafeteria so he, the main of uh, the main reason this student stayed in cafeteria to you know fill up this questionnaire was like he can have food he can have a rest and he can also you know meet some student and ask some question okay so this was kind of convenient thing but the correct way is for him to go around the campus and stand different places for five minutes ten minutes and then uh, close to different departments and from each department you know see five six seven students that would be randomly because he's favoring all different kind of department to ask his question so uh, as you see there are two different way one way is the most correct way the other way is sitting somewhere and ask uh, people question so obviously the one which is you know uh, is more kind of you know going around and finding different individual is more correct. So uh, this is convenient sample. Let's see what is the example here. It says a sample of malt shoppers is fast and cheap, but people at shopping malls tend to be more uh, prosperous than typical American. They are also more likely to be teenagers or retired. Moreover, unless interviewers are carefully trained, they tend to question well-dressed, respectable-looking people and avoid poorly dressed or tough-looking individual. So, this is a good example of convenient way of you know collecting data. Why? Because let's say the question they have is, what is the relation between uh, your income and, uh, for example. Uh, spending habit being in the mall so obviously people who are in the mall they have the money to be in the mall okay so that's why they are there so what about the rest of you know uh, kind of population like let's say my question is overall in Gallup and say what is the people's income in re relation to their spending so it's not fair if I just go stand in the mall and ask people different questions because what about those people who are, for example, working and who are lower income and they, they even don't go to the shopping mall. So what about those people? So my sample, the data I'm collecting is not fair to the rest of part of population, okay? So this is the best, best example of the convenient sample because we are favoring just a specific um, or certain part of population or like well dressed respectable look, looking you are favoring just this kind of people okay this one is kind of same as the example i had it says you see a student standing in front of the student center now and then stopping other students to ask them question she says that she's collecting a student's opinion for his class assignment so she's just in certain place and of course that place will be close to just a specific department so the way she can make it a better sample is just going around to different departments and finding different people to ask this kind of question whatever question she has to collect a better day okay so this is the convenient sample and then now there is another kind of sample which is not good, volunteer response sample. So volunteer response sample is that kind of sample which is not randomly chosen and uh, it's favoring a specific part of population. How it's favoring a specific part of population. 
So, um, so again, my question will be the same now. Actually, we are close to this kind of uh, presidential, uh, yeah, all these kind of things. So, this question will be more related to this kind of you know political activity. So, let's say a specific uh, news station like Fox News. <coughs> So obviously they have different political view, okay? They are asking people, okay, what is your opinion about this candidate, this candidate, this candidate? Please go to our website and vote and choose whoever you like. So who is watching this kind of news? Definitely those people who are like, they have a specific political view, okay? like Republican. So Republican definitely will go to the website and choose who choose Republican, right? So it will be like the aim of this newscast is just to collect data from their own viewers, right? And the own, their viewers also choose to answer because they <coughs> want to show how strong their political uh, you know, um, party is, okay? So this is a kind of sample which is not fair, which uh, kind of doesn't have a good result because the result is just favoring a specific party, a specific, you know, part of population, right? So in another word, you can say people here are choosing to answer the question. They are volunteer to answer the question, correct? So that's why we call this volunteer response sample. Because people choose to answer the question because that will benefit them, right? So these two sample, convenience sample and volunteer response sample, I can make it simple like that. Convenience sample is mostly to kind of easy and more benefit the person who is collecting data Volunteer response sample is mostly benefiting uh, those people who are answering. They choose to answer. So this is kind of difference between them or kind of definition for them. And this example is kind of same as my example that I had about political view. Okay, so now, do you have questions so far? These are samples which are not good. They are not random, they are favoring a certain part of population. So now let's see these two questions. I want to see um, <coughs> how to choose sample, how to choose population, how to understand it. Okay, it says, a political scientist wants to know how college students feel about the social security system. She obtained a list of 3,456 undergraduate at her college and mails a questionnaire to 250 students selected at random. So when we talk about random, means we are talking about a good sample. So now the aim of this question is to know more the concept of sample and concept of population. So we want to see what is population here, what is sample here. Okay, so if I want to say what is population, I said first of all, we are not going to use any number, okay? So the definition of definition of population is this, entire group of individuals, okay? So the first thing we should find is to know who are the individuals in this study. It says a, pol a political scientist wants to know how college students feel about the social security system. She obtains a list of this much undergraduate at her college and mails a questionnaire to 250 students selected at random. Only one of four questionnaire are returned. So who are the individuals in this, in this study? So the individuals are subject, object, people, animal, whoever that we are interested in to collect their data. College students. College students, right. <clears throat> Is that correct? So if you want to be more specific, we can say undergraduate, yeah. okay? 
undergraduate, graduate college. So these are individuals in this, uh, in this study. So if I want to ask you what is the population, now you should know what is the population here. See, I said no number, right? So population, the definition of population is this, entire group of individuals. Just instead of individual, you will say undergraduate student, right? So entire group of undergraduate student at their college will be the population. Do you understand this? So just replace the individual by whoever you found as an individual in this sentence, entire group of individual. So the population here will be entire group of undergraduate student at their college. Okay, so sample, I said sample is a part of population, correct? So part of population that we already have the information. And we can start our sampling or analysis on them. So, and I said we can have a number, we can use number, okay? So, out of this 3,456, um, they mail 250 questionnaires to this student. And then only 104 questionnaires are returned. Means they just have this much information at hand, okay? So if I ask you what is sample, you will say? 3,500. 104. So I said sample is a part of population that you have their data. You already have the data and you can start your analysis. So 104 is the questionnaire that gives you information and data. And that would be your sample, okay? And as you see, this is a small part of the whole population, right? Do you have any question? Wait, where do you get that number from? 104. Here, 104. Only 104 questionnaires are right oh, there. Oh, means like one out of four. No, <laughs> 104 means we have just this information now, and we can start our analysis. So the next question now it should be probably easier for you to answer this question. He said, a statistical software company is planning on updating version 8.1 of their software and wants to know what features are most important to users. The company's manager have the mail addresses of 1,100, um, 1,100 individuals, mostly faculty at university, for whom they have supplied free um, copy of this version, and then it says they mailed these 100, um, actually 1100 individuals, and asked them to complete a survey online. A total of 186 of these individuals complete the survey. So let's go backward and ask the easiest question first, and then we will uh, ask the most more difficult. What is the sample if you want to give me a number? What is this? 186, right? So this is just a sample size you gave me, right? So still there are more remaining. So what are the individuals in this study? The Who are the individuals? Users, because users of the software, software users. Is that correct? I kind of want to say features as well, but it says are most important to users. Is that correct? Yes. <coughs> no? Yes. So they yes. are asking software users some, informa some information, some question, correct? Okay? Yeah. So these are the individuals. So that is the most perfect answer because some students think faculty at university could be individuals. But it just says mostly faculty at universities. So what about the rest? So overall you can say users 
of this software or this company, customer of this company will be the best answer. It will be the individual. And then now, what is the population here? Entire group of software, software users. users. Exactly. Correct? So we know population is entire group of individual instead of individual you said software users and then if I again ask you what is the sample you will say 186 what who are the individuals software. software users exactly so 186 software okay so now we know what is population we know what is sample we know what samples are not good and here is kind of this sample that we can collect. So again, sample is part of the population, correct? So for example, 186 um, users of those software, right? We should collect them from whole population of users. So how we can collect them? The best way of collecting this information is collecting them randomly, choosing them randomly. Simple, random. Sample is the most uh, kind of basic kind of sample, but the best sample because first of all, it is random. Okay? Simple random sample. We show that with, I mean, Briefly, we can say S, R, S. S comes from simple, R, random, S, sample. So, the size of sample, that the last question we had, 186, I said that is the size of sample, okay? So far, if you saw, if we, if we were solving problem, I was using a small m, okay? Do you remember? So this small n is the sample size because most of questions we had were based on sample, the information of sample we had. So this is the sample size. Okay, it says if um, SRS of size n consists of an individual from the population chosen in such a way that every set of an individual has an equal chance to be the sample actually selected. Means we are not favoring any specific individuals, okay? They have all have the equal chance to be in the sample. So, in this class, we use table, random table, to choose a sample. So obviously, um, the examples we have in class will be so small. For example, we know the population is entire group of individual, it will be a huge number, right? And sample, for example, will be a smaller, let's say, like previous example, 186. But in this class, if you want to solve any question collecting sample, we cannot spend that much time to collect 186 individual, okay? So we will imagine we have a smaller population, that let's say 25 students here, okay? Let's say all this class, my morning statistic class is my population. And then in this population, I want to select five, six students randomly. So this is the idea, this is the thing we are doing. So if you see any examples here, uh, after this, whatever you see as a whole population, maybe the number of individuals is a small, but these are just examples for you, okay? We want to choose between actually the small you know, population, we want to choose a smaller part, like five, six, four individuals, just to know what is the concept of collecting Samples, collecting individual for our sample. So we are going to use SRS, simple random sample, as a method, and we will use table B as a tool 
to collect sample. So what does this table do? You can come here and get this table. Uh, so I think page three will be uh, the table here. And then here are all of that. It's a random table.
and we want to choose a sample size 4 out of these resorts. Do you understand this? So our aim is to select randomly four results, results out of this. So how we can do that? First of all, we should label our individuals in the population. So this is the first step. As you see, all of these have some number front of them. These are the labels. These are the labels. So labels are the number that we create for each individual in the population. First of all, we see how many individuals we have in this population. We have 28 of them, okay? We should label them using two digits. Why? Because the total number of individuals here had two digits. 28 has two digits, okay? So that's why we start with two digits. If the entire group of individuals, for example, was, uh, let's say, 215, I had to start with three digits label, okay? So my first label would be zero, zero, one. The second <laughs> label would be zero, zero, two, okay? So these are the way we label them. If, for example, we had 1,000 individuals, the labels start from 0, 0, 0, 1, four digits, right? So the first step is labeling all the individuals, and they should have the same number of digits, okay? The second step is to choose any line any line, we saw there is a column of lines in table B, okay? To choose any line. So now in this example, actually, let's, because we want to all have the same result, so let's choose the same line as they are offering. Doesn't matter which line you are choosing. The purpose of choosing line 130 is just to have all of us have the same result. Okay, and uh, check our result together. So, we will start from 130, because the question is same. It mentions line 130. Okay, so let's look at the line 130. Line 130 is here, okay? So let me zoom in. We we'll start from the first number here. Because our labels had two digits, because it had two digits, I will read these numbers two by two. Like the first two number here is 69, correct? Okay? The second two numbers is 0, 5. So if I want to read this line, I already like this. 69, 16, right? 48, 17, and so on. So because the labels had two digits, we read that two by two. If the labels had three digits, we should read it three by three. So we would say 619, 516. Do you understand this? Yes. Okay. So this was the second step. So now, we will go through this line. Read two by two. If we see any label matches our label in that question, we will choose that label or that individual as the individual to be in the sample. So. Let's read this. It says, the first two digits is 69. Do we have label 69 in our example? No. No, we didn't, right? So the labels that start from 0, 1 up to 28, okay? So if we see any number from 0, 1 to 28, we will choose that, but we didn't see, right? So now, continue. It says, the next one, 0, 5. 
Do we have 0, 5? Yes. yes, 0, 5. So which resort is 0, 5? Beach Castle. Beach Castle. So <laughs> this resort will be the resort in our sample. So how many, uh, how many uh, more individuals we need? Three more, correct? We just chose one. So we should continue, right? So this is just the first individual in our sample. Where is that? So 0, 5, 16. Can we choose 16? 16 is here. 1, 6, 16. Can we choose 16? Yes. So what was the 16? What resort it was? Radisson. <laughs> uh, you don't have it. I have it. So what is that? Radisson? Radisson, right? So far we chose this one, individual number five, and individual number 16, right? How many more? One more. One, one more? Two more. Two Two more. more. <coughs> so after 16, we have 48? No. No. 17? Yes. 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 We'll go back to see what was 17. Oh, and then continue. 87, no. So 17. Again, we saw 17, all right? Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of first rule that we should talk about. If you see any repetitive number, you will skip because you already chose that, correct? Mm -hmm. So anytime you saw any repetitive number, just skip that, move on, because you already chose it, okay? So you already chose individual number 17, so you are not going to choose it again. So after 17, we have 40. No. No. 97? No. no. Again, 17? No. no. 84? No. 53? No. no. 40? 64? 89? 20. 87? And? 20. Okay? So far, three of them. 0, 5, 17, 20. 16, 16 also. So four, so we are done. We chose four resorts to be in the sample. So did you understand what happened? We chose the number of individuals they were asking us to be in the sample. Do you have a question? So however many Wait, so why don't we start calling one for each? Just because we want to use the same one as the... Yeah, we wanted to use oh, the same one. And then since there's a... You could use any different column, every, any different column. Okay. So maybe, maybe if you choose a different column, maybe you don't see the same samples of the same four individual because it's randomly, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make sense to have exact same sample because you are choosing four of them in randomly. So different line maybe give you different sample, different four individuals. Or maybe one of them is exact same as this one. Maybe two of them is exact same. And it's maybe it's so rare actually to see four of them exact same. So the idea is choosing sample randomly. From any of this line, you will get random sample. So what was that? If we're choosing that random samples, why, uh, what were you doing with that counting thing that, that you like about like, here's 05, or 06, 08, or whatever? Because you were going down the path and then you were just like going through numbers and then you were saying this one yes, this one yes, this one no. Because each, we went through this line two by two, reading digits two by two. Why? Because the label had two digits, right? So we wanted to see if we are finding the matching digits as the labels, right? If we didn't find matching one, we said let's pass it. So read the next two digits. Read the next two digits. So when it matches, we say that is the uh, individuals, individual to be in the sample. If we cannot find it, we continue. If we see repetitive one, we will skip, correct? <laughs> If we cannot find enough of them, we will go to the next line. Okay, so you can just randomly select another one. 
No, to go, go to the next one. Yeah, so that's more reasonable. Hmm? Yes. If you cannot find all the four individuals, you have to go to the next line, 131. Mm -hmm. So, where do the, so the four individuals? Because they ask, they want oh, okay. just so four. So, we, we, we look at their number? Yeah. Like like they was like, say, four. Yeah, then, so that would be the sample size. Okay. Right? And then, uh, you just go by, by twos, so you see like, 24, 26, or Okay, so let's see the next example, and maybe that would be make everything more clear, okay? So let's see the next, next example. Um, so this one already gave you a label for each of them, right? Mm -hmm. So now let's see if you don't have a label. Okay, it says, a firm wants to understand the attitude of its ma minority managers toward its system for assessing management performance. Following is a list of all the firm's managers who are members of ma minority uh, groups. And then use the simple random sample, um, table B. We are going to use table B, okay? And it says specifically choose line 141, right? So that benefits us because we all want to have the same Sample. And it says choose five of them. Okay? So the sample size is five, right? And then, yep, okay, so we have these names here, and this is the whole population for us, right? So the first thing I said, you should label these individuals, okay? You will see how many individuals you have. Count them. Six. <clears throat> how many we have? Twenty-six. Twenty-six, right? So twenty-six tells us our label should be two digits, starting from zero one up to twenty-six. Okay. So label them please, I mean, uh, just write down for yourself as an example and then label them. And then this thing is important, I should talk about that before you label them. So maybe you say, okay, I want to label column wise and another student say, I want to go like that, label them like this, 010203. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter at all because your result will be randomly, okay? So doesn't matter which line you are choosing, doesn't matter how you are labeling, like, you know, column-wise or row-wise. But let's choose column-wise here because we want to compare our result, okay? So doesn't matter, but let's choose uh, column-wise and label them column-wise, okay? So label them like 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, up to 26. And then we will go back to the table line 141, if you are done, you can start already. And you should read two by two, digits two by two.
we done? Okay. So look at the table. 141. So 141. We should read them two by two, right? The first number is 96. We don't choose it, okay? Because it's not in the label, right? 76. So if it's not in one of these? Exactly. Okay. Okay? So if it is not one of these labels, we will skip, right? And then 76 also is not one of them. And then the next two digit is 73, it's not. 59, it's not. 64, no. 23, yes. So 23 will be one of the individuals in the sample. Right? After 23, we have 82, 29, 60, then 12. Which one is that? Right? After 12, we have 94, 59, 16. Yes. So, what was that 16? So, after 16, we have 51, 91, 94, 50, 84, 20, 5. Okay. So what we have, 33, 72. Are we done? No. No, no because it says five of them, right? 72, and then let's go to the other line. Again, 72, 82, 95, two, zero. <laughs> 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 That's the last name, huh? These are last names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is kind of That's my father. Is it Iranian? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Chinese. <laughs> Ding. You. Stop. What? What's the letter? Really long. No. Ahmad Yani was easy for me. Yeah. Okay, do you have any question? Any question? Okay, so now there are more things about this table we should know. So we know now, according to the number of individuals we have, we will choose either two digits label, three digits label, okay? So there are some specific labels that are kind of different. We can choose any way of labeling. Okay, so let's say we have we have 100 individuals. Let's say we have total of 100 individuals in our population. How you will label your individual? in the population of 100 individuals. You will say zero, zero? One. Okay. Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, two, up to 100. So this is the label you choose, right? There is another way of choosing label for this kind of number, like exactly 100. We can say zero, one, zero, two, up to <coughs> 99, zero, zero. Oh. So zero, zero will be? 100, right? <coughs> so there are two ways of <coughs> labeling 
hundred individuals in population. This is just it. Just whenever you have exactly hundred, okay? So now, let's say we have 1,000. So what you will say? So the normal way you want to say is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, up to 999. No, because we have extra zero there, huh? Is it 0, 9, 9, 9? It should be. Oh, because we have. Oh. No, that was. It's zero, zero nine nine nine. Okay, so see it's difficult. <laughs> now we can say zero zero one, zero 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 two, nine nine nine, and zero 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 as one thousand. One thousand, sorry. Right? <laughs> Do you have questions? Okay, so the rest of this PDF is talking about So we will talk about inference about the population more in next chapter and like the way I said at first, if you choose a sample from population, you can use the information you got from this sample and interpret or make a conclusion about the bigger, bigger number of individuals which is population. So this is all the aim of sample. And later we will see different terms, how it makes sense, how we can easily choose a small part of population and say, okay, this result gives us con conclusion about population. We will see that later. And they call that inference, inference about the population. It says the purpose of a sample is to give us information about the larger population. So it says the process of drawing conclusion about the population on the basis of sample data is called inference. Okay, so now I wanted to talk about bias also. Look at this, I don't want to forget that. So, as we saw, convenience sample, variant theory response sample, these are not good, right? Because they favor certain uh, part of population. So where is bias? Up in here. So, it said the design of a statistical study is bias if it systematically favors certain outcomes. So it means the result is not correct. The result is not uh, the way it should be because it's sample favoring a specific or certain outcome, like valentine response sample, like uh, convenience sample. These kind of samples are favoring a part of society, so it will have a certain outcome right? Like voluntary response sample, if Fox News have a question, definitely there will be a certain outcome or result out of that question because mostly that um, kind of channel is Republican and Republican people will answer the question and then it will be everything favor of Republican, right? So that will be the favor of certain outcome. So if a sample is favoring a certain outcome, that sample will be biased. So we said SRS, simple random sample, sample, is a good sample because it's random and obviously it's not biased, right? Because it's not favoring any specific app. The other kind of sampling design which is good and using simple random sample is a stratified random sample. It's like if you want to, um, if you have a huge population in like United States, and um, I mean actually um, uh, kind of uh, um, this 
presidential uh, kind of candidates that will be a good example. Like in each state, uh, we will have a certain sample in each state. For example, in each state of the United States, we will have a simple random sample. And then we will combine all the results together. Why we do that? Because this population of United States is so huge, okay? And we are not going to miss any certain part of this population. The best way of collecting sample is just make it like different strata or different branches or different states, different categories. And from each category, you get simple random sample. From, for example, one state, simple random sample. Another state, another simple random sample. But you should be careful if you are choosing, for example, sample size of 50 from each state, from one state, you should choose simple random sample of size 50 from another state, from another state, same size, same size from all the states. So each state will be strata or will be like category for us. So from each category, we are choosing simple random sample and then we can combine all the results and this will be a certified random sample, which is obviously random because we are using simple random sample. So, yeah, United States will be a good population for this kind of uh, samples. It's, it will be a good example for this kind of sample. So, there are two other definitions under coverage non-response. <coughs> Sometimes when we, mm, uh, for exactly same uh, example, the United States. Sometimes we are collecting data, simple random sample from each state, and all of a sudden we forget one of these states. For example, Puerto Rico or somewhere, you know, that we forget. That part of population that we are not covering will be under coverage because we forgot to cover it. So, under coverage means a specific part of population is kind of they forgot to cover that part and they didn't include that and uh, that will be kind of concept of under coverage another definition is non-response if for example i give you a questionnaire and some of the students they don't want to answer the questions and they return back the kind of empty questionnaire to me so i don't have any answer i don't have any response from that person right so that would be non-response so if I'm collecting sample, maybe we see this kind of you know problems like non-response, under coverage. These are some definitions you know we should know when we are uh, dealing with sample and population. Okay. So do you have any question? This is all about chapter eight. We talked about sample population, and the most important things here is to know how, what is the population, to know what is the sample, to know what kind of samples are not good, what kind of samples are good, and then how to use table B to collect samples. These are all the, you know, uh, things we um, should know in this chapter. Do you have any questions? No. Any questions? No. Okay. So, we are done with this chapter, you can start your